Telecommunications is the cornerstone of modern life. Today we can communicate with people all over the world with ease, but this has not always been the case. Since the very first forms of electrically based communications were launched, enormous changes have been seen. And the history of telephones and the telegraph is particularly interesting. The first telegraph systems gave way to the first phones, and then technology moved on to see the introduction of the first mobile phones and more. In this video, we'll look at some of the key examples of the systems and the equipment that have been used over the years. Once electromagnetism was discovered, a number of people came up with the ideas for communication systems. One of the first to be deployed was the Cook and Wheatstone system. The system consisted of a sender and receiver on which needles would point to letters, and in this way it would send messages. The downside of the system was that it required five wires plus a return, and in these early days of electrical science, insulated wires were very expensive to produce. Another system was developed by the American artist Samuel Morse a few years later. It used only a single wire and a return, but relied on sending a series of on-off signals of different length, dots and dashes, and this conveyed the message. The actual idea of the Morse key itself probably came from one of Morse's associates, a man named Alfred Vail. However, the overall Morse system was a great success and soon caught on, initially around America and shortly afterwards all over the world. Morse's first demonstration system ran between Washington DC and Baltimore and it opened on the 24th of May 1844. It's interesting to note that when the original Morse system was devised, it used a Morse key to send the messages and a clockwork powered instrument, often called a register, to mark a paper tape for receiving. It marked the tape with the dots and dashes so that the message could be saved and translated later. Soon the telegraph operators didn't need the markers as they could decipher the clicks and clacks that they made and an item called a sounder became the norm instead although markers were still used where the message needed to be saved. Generally though, it was much simpler to use a sounder and one could easily be placed onto a small portable base with a Morse key. This was often known as a cob or key on base. These were ideal because American telegraphers were often itinerant and used their own keys and sounders, simply connecting them to the wires of the telegraph system. We're all familiar with the on-off tones of a Morse signal, but this only came after Morse started to be used for radio communication. Morse code became the mainstay of many of these links, often being used by the military. One interesting key was used in the Second World War by the RAF, and it was called a bathtub key as a result of its shape. It was enclosed to stop the possibility of sparks between the key contacts, causing explosions in an aircraft where it was thought the concentration of fuel fumes might be dangerously high. Although messages could be sent using these systems, people wanted to be able to actually speak to one another. From the 1840s onwards, a number of people started to come up with ideas for the first telephones. There's actually a lot of controversy about the actual inventor, and names including Johann Philip Rice, Elisha Gray, Antonio Meucci, and of course Alexander Graham Bell, as well as a number of others. They're all names associated with the invention, although Bell's name is often the only one spoken about. The first phone systems required connection by operators at a central exchange, but later dials were introduced onto the telephones as mechanical systems for switching calls were implemented in the telephone exchanges. The dials were designed so that a finger was placed in the hole for the number required and then the dial moved round to the end stop. It was then left to return under its own power. As it did this, the dial mechanism generated a number of electrical pulses and these were interpreted by the exchange. The first phones using push buttons and a scheme called DTMF were introduced by Bell Telephones in 1963. However, it took quite a number of years for the system to be deployed everywhere as electronic exchanges were needed but when installed, they offered much faster and more reliable service. In the 1980s, the first mobile phone systems started to be commercially launched. 
The first phones used analog technology with frequency modulated carriers. These could easily be intercepted and by the early 1990s the new second generation digital systems were introduced. They offered much better security as well as better performance and more capabilities. Later third generation phone systems were introduced and these were followed by the fourth and fifth generations. With these the focus increasingly became data and ubiquitous connectivity. In around 150 years electrical and electronic based telecommunications has moved from the relatively simple wired and code based systems that were only available at telegraph offices through to the mobile communication systems of today where people have their own phones and access to the whole system. They have access not only in large busy cities but also in vast rural areas where large phone masts may often be seen. The development in technology has been huge and this is only set to continue into the future.